It's been a long time coming, but we've finally had the chance to drive north of the border to see our friend Sergio Couto of Circuit Wild Harvest. Mr Childley, how much stalking have you done in Scotland? Uh, very little actually, this is uh, the furthest I've been up stalking in Scotland. I've been up to uh, Solway area for red deer and for wild goats. And uh, so this is super cool really, something totally different. Different ground, different weather. <laughs> nice to be guided. <laughs> nice to be guided. Yeah, it's not my problem again. It's just brilliant because I just just look around and enjoy the the scene, and it's yeah, it's great. And uh, yeah, it's just good. To, also, it's good to see other people, see how they do it, pick up some tips. <laughs> Where is he? There he is. Uh -huh. <laughs> tips. And uh, so yeah. Looking forward to it, really. Load of peer surgeon. It that. was Portugal in January 2020 where we last hunted with him on one of his exciting, raw, wild Monterias. Sergio is Portuguese and lives here in Scotland. We anticipate the next couple of days will be more relaxed. It's Robux, but with a few surprises along the way. I see you shot quite a few bucks the last few weeks, couple of weeks. So if that was back home, the bad weather we've had, we'll be shooting like minimal. But you you still got quite a few bucks obviously moving, yeah, they're moving a bit. The thing you see, I don't know about where you, I've never been there, but here we have a lot of situations like this. Yeah. A very small woodland in the middle of the field. Yeah, yeah. They don't have much to do oh, apart from going out into the field. Yeah. It's like, you know, that type of trees is fantastic for cover, but there's no food in it. Yeah, got, yeah. they got to come out. So they have to come out. Yeah, yeah. So if, if you see a deer that worked for me, if I see a, see, uh, see, saw a deer there in a, in a sunny day, he'll be there in a bad day. Yeah, yeah, okay. They may not move as much, yeah, yeah. but they still have to do yeah. check their mail and do yeah. all that things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Serge has some exceptional ground for Roe in this part of Aberdeenshire. He only took a handful last year, so thanks to Covid, the bucks are a plenty. However, the first Roe we encounter has some maturing to do. What is this? For God's sake. Nature trail. I'm on the camera, you're the one with the rifle, you're guided, right? Let's, let's sort his priorities out. Yeah, very good, yeah. <laughs> Multimedia <laughs> event, obviously. So that's a very beautiful little... Well, stop it. Honestly now, come on. Beautiful little road, road corner. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a little diddler he is. I mean, he just curled up there asleep. So I just thought it was a hen pheasant on a nest, that's why he was intrigued to see what it was. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. Don't worry, we're plenty of distance away from it, so Mum will be back soon. Yeah, beautiful. We've seen our first road here, first Scotch road here. That's it. Do you, got, you got any bigger ones? You can go home. <laughs> only big ones, yeah. <laughs> We leave it be and continue on our search for Paul's oh, first Scottish oh, robot. Raining. It's about 8 o'clock in the evening, but at this time of year and this far north, we could be hunting till well after 10. The does start to make an appearance, but as yet, no bucks. Then Paul spots one. With the wind at our backs, it's going to mean a serious detour. The dense, dark plantation is a stalker's corridor, leading us, we hope, straight to our buck. Pair of uh, rub out on the side here. Yeah. We spot them from the far side, and uh, we see one of them as a buck. Like she spotted as a buck, and uh, we've got a loop right the way around and come back through this thick forest tree. So it's said that we're going to come out below them, but they're fair way up the top. So that's all right. <laughs> calm down a bit now. We tread carefully. Then, 90 metres ahead of us is a dark looking six point buck. As we haven't disturbed the other animals, we have time. What a luxury. Then the buck sniffs the air. Both Paul and Sergio clock he's going to take off any moment, and Paul takes the shot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, 
but that, as soon as you see that, I thought, yeah. So you're going to have to take it because here the wind will come to Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Hit again. Did hit it too, yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. It wasn't quite clear on his, so I tried to shoot him a little bit, forward a little bit, but. but it's done, he's just yeah. dead. Yeah, nice one. It's there, very dark, isn't it? Dark is, yeah, real dark. Yeah, it's dark. Never seen dark like that. Yeah, dark. It's changing, it's changing to rusted gold, kind of, but it's very dark. Very dark, yeah, dark antlers as well, very dark antlers. Cool. So we spotted over there. Yeah. About three mile <laughs> loop. Loop. Snook through here. Yeah. yeah, you come back. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, that's it. Now we we'll have some peaceful from David. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> the ground is covered in row. It offers them some fine greens. So we've got two more there. One at the back there. One that's come past off the buck we just shot. In the bottom of the ditch, there's watercress, is it? So, watercress, yeah. yeah. Watercress, roe deer, and watercress sandwiches. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't he? First Scottish buck. Beautiful buck as well. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome, bro. Thank you very much. Super cool. Absolutely chuffed. Yeah. You can do a lot of scraping as well, aren't you? Yeah, beautiful. Really rusty colour. It actually not, looks normal here. Yeah, yeah. It must have been the light or something. Yeah. Your heads are quite dark, so I suppose it's because of the. All the raping, all the sitka spruce. Yeah, yeah. And this is a typical head from around here, is it? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they can... Like people, they come all in all shipping for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two, four, three, four. Two, four, three, yeah. Why did I choose it? Because um, there's quite a lot of pressure on this job. And basically, chose a carbon light, two, four, three. I've been shooting well with it and didn't want to make it too difficult for myself. <laughs> so, yeah, that's probably the, the truth of the matter is. Yeah, it's good. Also, it's a nice lightweight gun. So for this job, it's just great. You just chuck it on your back and let you know it's there. It's a lovely looking buck. And after a 500 mile drive, it's nice to be rewarded with such a great first outing. Paul, do row bucks get um, sort of whiffy like fallow bucks? You tend to get in the, in the rut. They lose a lot of condition. And personally, I don't think they eat as well. Um, this time of year, they're quite good because they're put, they got all the weight, putting all the weight on, ready for the rut. What a start to our trip, and it looks like we're going to be hunting on some interesting terrain. Thanks to Sacco Rifles for kidding out Paul and sponsoring this piece, and if you want to go stalking with Sergio, visit circootwildharvest.com.